Yeah, okay, hello, welcome, thank you very much for joining, and um, um, I will talk about uh, FOSS and uh, some experiments that we did with FOSS, so my first question is who has, of you has heard about FOSS, okay, who has written a FOSS program, okay, I see. So I try to uh, be uh, with the term terminology close to normal computer science terminology because FOSS has its own uh, kind of language. I try to be as understandable as possible. Um, I will talk about uh, the new synthesis. That's a project that's ongoing and we try to uh, understand the essentials of comp computation and uh, find minimalistic ways to uh, realize things uh, and build a basis uh, of computation. And for this, we build uh, a family of force like languages with uh, restrictions and certain properties. I will go then and talk about the ICE concept. I think most of you wouldn't have heard about this before, but it's about 20 years ago that Charles Moore, the inventor of force, uh, proposed the ICE concept. So we will look at this and see that other programming languages have this as well. And today I will focus on Seedforce, uh, which is in uh, one of these languages in the family of things that we do. And um, uh, the special thing about it, it doesn't accept text-based source code, but it accepts tokenized source code. And we will look into the details and why is this uh, adva of advantage in the setup that we're looking at. Um, yeah, and then we'll do some summary and uh, we have probably time for uh, uh, questions and answers. Um, yeah, I already said uh, we want to understand the general foundation of computation. So how small can it be looking at Van Neumann uh, architecture and find out what is the essential really. And uh, with a fourth background especially, we want to know about the basic principles of force. So what can be left out? Uh, there's an international standard and uh, of course you look at this following the quote from uh, uh, the little prince, uh, take away what is not necessary and then you find perfection. And um, so we want to uh, go there, uh, th make things smaller uh, and uh, have a sound basis uh, and then let things grow again. So um, yeah, we want by this uh, build a basis of a new modern force and I'm s uh, think about uh, this morning's talks so even a poem language or XP that we just saw uh, could be uh, implemented not just on LLVM but uh, on our basis and so that's probably a nice thing. So um, within the new uh, synthesis we follow uh, certain guidelines so we want to express most of the things in force and uh, uh, if you think about it it's a high level language and you can express function applications and you can uh, define data structures and so on. So we try to express as much as we can in, in force and we did this uh, also with a cooperative multitasker that is normally supposed to be written in some low level uh, assembly language for, for the task transfers. So this is uh, also done uh, uh, in force. Uh, we strive to get some bootstrappable things. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the languages is bootstrapper uh, and uh, very nice. Um, uh, all should be co completely transparent. So you could uh, talk to us and I say in two hours I can explain what's going on. If you have some force background and computer science background and then you can look at all the source code that we have which is quite a, a small amount of source code and you can understand what's going on. Um, so it's completely transparent for you. Everything is uh, accessible for you and it's simple to understand. So we're looking for simplicity. And uh, for this, we also look at uh, analogy to biological things, uh, for example, like uh, how DNA is replicating uh, and we're thinking about this. And seed force, the name, uh, goes into the area of botanics, of course. Uh, so something is a small seed and then it grows and we will see how it grows. Um, the technique that we use is disaggregation. So we see this uh, complex systems. We try to uh, dissect it and find uh, the, the principles in isolation. And then we reassemble these in an appropriate way afterwards. So 
And on that way, we built a family of uh, minimalistic stack-based languages. And I have a slide that compares the two that are in the title of this talk. That's pre-force and seed force. And pre-force was the initial attempt. And pre says it's not really a force because it has so many limitations. Um, and you can see maybe uh, as a key characteristics, the lines of code that you need to uh, express this is uh, 500 lines uh, with pre-force and roughly the same for, for the seed force. So they are very small languages. And I'm not talking compiling to, um, to LLVM or some abstract machine. It's, uh, this is for the 386 machine code uh, interface, which spits out assembly code. And then there is an assembler. Uh, yeah. The other uh, key feature maybe is uh, the number of primitives. So um, uh, the preforce has 13 primitives, and this means uh, many features are missing, like memory. Uh, it doesn't have addressable memory. It has to do all on, on the two stacks, which uh, one is for parameter passing, and the other one is for uh, function call procedure return addresses. And because of this, if you want to do string handling, you have to do this all on the stacks, not in memory. So there are no uh, memory representation of strings. You put them character by character on the stack, and you deal with this, which you can assume is not very comfortable, but it works. And you have recursive functions in uh, all of them. Um, also, preforce uh, doesn't have any uh, control structures. The only thing is that you have a procedure call with possibly tail recursion elimination and a conditional exit. And then you're up to formulate whatever uh, programs you want. Both are Turing complete, so you can actually do this. And it turned out preforce is too simple, actually, to uh, be the seed that we can grow everything out of it. Yeah, I tried this, and then uh, within the discussion, uh, we, we said, OK, no, it's not worth it. But it's suitable to build the next force system, and that is seed force. And seed force now has memory. It has memory oper operators. It has some more primitives, mainly for memory and uh, um, yeah, for for uh, yeah. I think it's mainly memory and uh, um, and uh, some some other things. Uh, and it's only a little bit uh, more uh, in, in size. It has conditionals, so we have branching instructions as well, right? And uh, so uh, yeah, so that's uh, mainly it. And if you look at the uh, data types, then uh, preforce can only handle characters and integers. And you build up all the structures on the stack. And uh, of course, if you have memory, you want to address the memory. You also have addresses. Right. So uh, let's come to the ICE concept. That's something that in the uh, talk of Charles Moore, if you listen to him very carefully um, in 1999, and I revised the YouTube videos that have been made at that time, uh, and I came up with, ah, right. ICE is what we actually are uh, doing. That makes force and other languages very uh, exciting. And uh, yeah, the, the property is we have an interpreter that uh, can take commands and uh, uh, work on them. We have a compiler that can take text and create code. And then uh, we can even execute at arbitrary times things that we just de defined. Yeah? And Force has this property, but other languages like Lisp has this property. You do a function definition, next time you call it. In Force, you define a word, next time you call it. Um, and you can even, during compilation, you can uh, go ahead and, uh, um, uh, and switch between execution and interpretation. So that's uh, quite nice. Small example, uh, I can define a function definition erase which goes and uh, uh, initialize some memory with uh, zero. Uh, then I can interpret, uh, define some constant buffer with an appropriate size. And then I can execute the definition that I just defined uh, in there. And uh, this will execute at compile time, yeah, when, when I process uh, the file and compile it. So let's have a look at Seedforce. The great thing about Seedforce is that it, it accepts uh, uh, tokenized source code, and this means it doesn't have, need to have a parser or whatever to analyze text, so that's just great. Um, it's about 550 lines of code, and uh, you can extend it by doing function definitions. And it could be recursive functions, so that's uh, really easy, and because it um, follows the ICE principle, like all the languages that we do, um, it uh, has a compiler that compiles definitions, an interpreter that 
uh, can uh, execute definitions even during compilation. So that's uh, quite, a nice, uh, uh, quite nice, and it's intended for building applications. And uh, one of these applications is actually a full-featured interactive force system with a, a read eval print loop, a REPL, which is called text interpreter in the force term terminology. And we have uh, I386 and uh, AMD64 implementation right now, but I experimented with the C backend as well. Uh, as some symbolic backend so you can stuff it into a Lisp system and to get some execution. So here's the core slide uh, that shows what it is. There's something that uh, is created with Preforce that is called the C4 bed. Think of flower bed. Yeah, so the botanic analogy. And that's the small core, 550 lines of code, 2K of memory. And this is 32 bit, so uh, uh, about 500 bytes is just the initialization, initialization of the uh, of the table, so the code is really small. Uh, it's 31 assembly primitives and then some uh, amount of uh, additional things. And then uh, you have three levels, the text-based source code at the top, tokenized source code in the middle, and then the seed for bed on the growing seed for system uh, below. Uh, also, we have, of course, operating system hardware support uh, necessary to do some I.O. or whatever if you have an IoT device to uh, access the hardware. And um, so if you have source code of your application, it first will be tokenized. And then this token stream will be fed into the seed force bed and it will be extended. But still it can do ICE. It can interpret things, it can compile things, and it can execute things on the fly during compilation. Yeah? Um, the virtual machine that is uh, about this looks like this. It has these two stacks, one for parameter passing, one for return stacks. Uh, and instead of a parser, it just has a symbol table. The names of functions are <coughs> tokenized into function numbers. And so to know, uh, in order to know where uh, a function actually starts, you just have an index access into the token table. The token table just captures the start addresses of the functions. And if you uh, appear to see, OK, there's uh, function uh, 3b yeah, actually coming then you can go ahead and look up what is its starting address and you can compile a call to that appropriate thing. So we have data, ex uh, uh, data memory and code memory to do this and several pointers that mark the free areas uh, of this. So that's a quite simple architecture. And uh, here are the C4, C4 bad words. I don't want to go into details of all of them, but the two interesting things for the ICE concept are the interpreter and the compiler. And what does the interpreter do? It accepts a token from the input stream, and then it executes whatever function is associated with that number. Looks up in the table, finds the start address, and then jumps to that, or does a, does a subroutine call. And then it does interpreter again. So th it, actually, this is an endless loop, and because we have tail interpreter, it's uh, tail recursive, so it will not spill up the return stack or whatever. The compiler we go accept the token, or maybe uh, it's a zero, then we exit the compiler loop, go back to the interpreter loop. Maybe it's a lit, and then we'll do some stuff with the literal. But in the end, if it's not a lit, then it will just go ahead and compile a reference uh, to the appropriate function, and then it, it also loops. So the compiler is in a loop until it finds a zero, uh, and the token interpreter will just go ahead and execute things. So uh, we have source code. There, where we look at the source code, and uh, we see here some. This is the hello world example for uh, for uh, seed force. So we just emit things, and we find in the tokenized thing also the string hello. We won't go into detail here very much. We can have a function definition, increment the top element on the stack uh, that is like this, and then we can invoke this already here. So again, we have uh, interpret, compile, and execute of things. And if you look carefully uh, on the previous slide, uh, the next token in the sequence would be 3b. And uh, ta-da, here's the 3b. That is the invocation uh, of the, uh, that, that is the tokenized uh, of this, uh, which will reside in the invocation in the, in the compiler. So, and that's uh, uh, the output, of course. And uh, so where is the ICE principle now being applied, really? That's when we have control structures. Control structures like begin until need to be compiled into conditional branches, yeah. And uh, yeah, the, uh, in, in the end, so uh, begin uh, or the tokenizer takes function calls and makes single tokens out of it, 
and for, there are also macros that expand to sequences of, uh, uh, of tokens. And so begin uh, expands to the sequence by here compiler, which means uh, um, exit the compiler, do something uh, in interpret mode, and then restart the compiler. And uh, until uh, expands to the sequence question branch by comma compiler, which means compile branch, uh, then uh, uh, leave the compiler and uh, uh, compile the appropriate uh, address and then restart the compiler. And so if we look at the tokenization, then we see uh, begin is 01A24 and until will be compiled to, uh, or tokenized to 1500-2024. Yeah? And if we run this, uh, then that's it. Right, so seed forth grows. Uh, you just feed the seed forth bed, plant new things in there, and we did lots of experiments with this. And uh, uh, so we have dynamic memory and many, many things like exceptions and uh, incorporated multitasker and closure-like things and so on that you can build all on top of this. And uh, that's a full-featured force system uh, uh, that I already talked about it's called Seedforce Interactive. You can all look up uh, this up on the, uh, on the Preforce uh, uh, GitHub page. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, mainly it. So we want to extend this further. And if you're interested, st come and uh, get in contact with me so we can talk about this. So new targets, especially IoT targets, are on the way. And new synthesis, the book. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for listening, and I'm happy to answer your questions. Preforce can actually take uh, code words and colon definitions, and it will uh, convert this to uh, appropriate assembly language in the setup that we currently have. And then you use the platform assembler to, uh, to create the executable in the end. Yeah, so it's, it's these uh, 31 primitives written in assembler, and then uh, uh, about 20 things uh, among these uh, compiler and interpreter to actually make this uh, ICE capability available. OK, thank you very much. Any more questions? Yeah. So uh, if you were to port uh, this system to a new architecture, would you have to only rewrite uh, the pre or would you have to uh, do yeah, pre it? Sit on top of yeah. Like Actually, you, you don't need to rewrite preforce because it's, uh, it's used to uh, uh, do the seed force. Uh, it can run on the host system. But you need to rewrite the 31 uh, primitives in seed force. And uh, the estimate time, because they are really, really simple, like yeah. moving here and there, there is half a day for a new platform. So you can start reading the manual in the morning and in the evening. Uh, you have a C4 bed system running, and all above is just uh, machine independent. You can just load it on top. And it feels fast enough uh, to work. You would think uh, a small set of primitives would slow it down dramatically. No, that's not the case. The experience is it's really fine. Uh, good to use and uh, uh, of high speed. Okay. Anyone? Yeah. Um, the source code is text based, but how is it tokenized? I mean, there's, there's a, uh, there's a fourth program right now that does the tokenization. And one of the tasks uh, that you might have seen on the slide is to rewrite the tokenizer in Seedforce itself. Uh, it's already, uh, I ha already have a version in Seedforce Interactive, the, the extended one. Uh, but uh, uh, we want to have it in Seedforce itself. And then so everything is self-contained and the bootstrapping is there. Everything transparent, everything available to you, no hidden things. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the mic.